Well, Kepler, can you tell us why you've come to, this, to the decision to retire from AFL football? Uh, yeah, it's quite a simple one. I'm nearly 29 now and I've really played for the last two years after my knee reconstruction. Um, Try to come back this year as, as um, soon as I, my body would let me, but um, done about five hamstrings on the way. On the way, so um, just looking at the pace of the game now and um, the way the the ball, the the, the way how fast it is. It's uh, it looks like the game's gone past me, and um, I played waffle on the weekend, and my body was a bit sore. So that was the final nail in the coffin that um, it wasn't meant to be, and uh, I'll play out the last two weeks of waffle and. Um, sit back and watch the boys play finals. Uh, any plans on uh, next season yet? What are you going to be doing? Uh, I'm going to have a couple of months off. Um, body's a bit sore, hamstrings hanging by a thread, so I um, haven't really thought about it too much. I've done a bit of work experience here and there um, on some things outside of footy, so um, yeah, I'll, I'll have a month or two off and assess my options and um, hopefully stay in footy some some way, shape or form. Any hopes to play in the waffle? Uh, yeah, once again, just let the body recover, um, get up and running again and just see how the body goes. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, wouldn't, I would like to play some so, sort of footy. I've actually enjoyed my time down at Peel uh, trying to develop the young guys and hopefully fast track them. So um, yeah, if I can maybe go back to a waffle club if that's what I decide to do and help the younger guys back there, um, yeah, I'd be more than willing to, to play at that level. Have you told the playing group today? Yeah, I told them, told them this morning, so uh, it was a little bit easier than I thought. Um, when I stood up in front of the group, I, I just knew it was time. And um, yeah, I told the boys that I'll hang around for the next eight or nine days, play the last couple of waffle games and, um, and watch them in the finals. And um, the only bloke that got upset was Bellas because he's got no one to annoy anymore. So uh, he had a little tear in his eye. But um, no, it was, it was all good. And um, trained, trained today and it was all good. The boys are ready to go. Well, that was my next question. How, how did Bellas take the news? But what are you going to do without uh, Bellas around every day? Well, I don't know. I've got no one to get angry at anymore. So, uh, yeah, if life outside of footy might be a little bit less stressful when I'm uh, doing certain things and he's poking me and pushing me and pinching me. So, um, yeah, uh, he's a great guy. And um, it's just a shame that you've got to leave a few of your great mates behind and he's one of them. Uh, we muck around all the time together and um, I'll, I'll probably miss that in a month or two when, when I don't have anyone annoying me. So um, yeah, it's just great to make good friendships and hopefully they last outside of footy. You've got a bit of a reputation as a funny man around the club. What's the best practical joke you've played on someone? <laughs> I've been asked this a couple of times the last couple of weeks, but um, I don't really play practical jokes. I think it's once again Bella's playing the jokes on me and me reacting because um, half the playing group know that he's going to do something and I'll walk through the door not knowing and I, I cop it and get a bit angry and frustrated and they, they, they reckon it's quite funny. So um, he's the practical joker and I'm the one that wears half his practical jokes. So um, the, bo the boys get a bit of a giggle out of that. Is there one that stands out that Bellas has played on you? Uh, oh, just every time I go to the toilet, he's throwing ice cold water over the over the top. And um, as you know, you only bring one change of clothes. So for the rest of the day, you're um, you're a bit cold and wet. But uh, he, he loves he loves anything when I'm busy doing something or concentrating. He'll always find a way to wet me, pinch me, punch me, annoy me. So um, yeah, he's just uh, he's a great character. Besides that, what's been the highlight of your time here? Um, I think just. The last three years we've played, managed to play finals. Um, I was a part of the Geelong win in, at the MCG and that was, that was one of the highlights, but it's just a great vibe to be around. Um, I haven't been in too many successful clubs before the last three years, so um, just being around the boys and seeing the young guys learn the game plan a lot quicker and um, everyone's on the same page, out on the training track, they're all bettering themselves and um, you can see it game day as well. So even though I'm not probably playing, it's, it's um, just to sit back and see where the young guys are, have been and, the, and that, where they are now and matching it with the best teams, um, yeah, it's just a great vibe to be around. And the fans, you're a, a bit of a cult hero with them over the years. What's your message to them? Oh, it's just been great over the years. I can, I can hear them uh, over in Melbourne and um, when I, when I play at Subi, the, the crowd roars, so uh, I don't think they're too sure what I'm going to do, but hopefully I've made a few of the fans happy over the years and um, hopefully a few of them came to the footy to, to watch me, but um, I appreciated me getting my time here at Freo. I've spent seven years and I appreciate the fans rocking up and barracking, barracking us um, at Subiaco Oval because um, they've really made it a fortress and I think teams that travel when they come there, they know they're there because of the fans. So um, they're a massive part of what, what we're about and everyone's jumping on board and hopefully we can have a good year and, and the fans are a massive part of it.